Hello, there's Conrad. Hey. We got the van. How do we resolve the van situation, Conrad? We got this big ass van here, but just like a splitter van or parts or something like that. And uh, we don't need a special license for this one. It's a pretty big van, it's the biggest vehicle I ever driven. And uh, right now we're gonna go to a very pleasant visit to the dentist. I broke my back teeth in them and uh, it's giving me Nam will do that to you. I know, Nam will do that to you for sure. Yeah, you broke and a tooth. I broke a tooth. Yeah. And on the back. So we landed We landed in the UK, okay? Mark's here. There's Mark. Everything's lovely. Absolutely lovely. We got the van. We got the van. Things are looking up. I just avoided a lawsuit, I think. And... Con there'll be another one later this afternoon. There'll be another one this afternoon. Yeah, and we're working on it. Conrad's off to the dentist. So that's where we're going now, and maybe to get some breakfast as well. So, Graham and I started working together, and I was having the time of my life. I couldn't believe how lucky I was. It was really fun. I was learning all kinds of things from him. And uh, Graham had some other people he had suggested that we work with, but I said, well, wait a minute. Do you remember Conrad, who you played with in my band? I said, why don't we see what he's up to and if he'd be interested? He's like, oh yeah, that guy's great. That's a great idea. Let's do it. And uh, so we, we phoned him up. He's like, hell yeah. <laughs> The rest is history. I do want to tell you how I uh, met Conrad. He's actually a friend of my ex-husband's, and um, we were supposed to be playing the Sunset Strip Music Festival, and at the very last minute, the guitar player we'd been working with, another guy in our all-girl band, uh, he, he sort of bailed, and we were strapped, and there were three people that had been suggested to us, Conrad being one, and then, um, well, I'm not even going to mention the other two, but they had really great pedigrees or whatever, but there was something about Conrad. We're like, let's, let's give him a shot. And he really had about, I don't know, a week to learn our entire set. And uh, that night at, at the gig, he got on stage and he was a wild man. I mean, first of all, he played great, but he even looked better than he played. I mean, he was all over the place. He was running, running out on to the, like they had these big uh, speakers out in the audience. He was like on top of them doing his leads and stuff. I was standing there going, oh my God, who is this guy? I said, and after that night, after we finished playing, I said, that's it. I'm taking you in every band I, I ever go into. You're coming with me. Because he was just phenomenal. So it's Thursday morning and Conrad's at the dentist with a broken tooth. Giles and I are in the middle of an industrial park in a food shop. Giles is getting his fish and chips. And uh, it's a beautiful day, a little on the cold side for my taste, but it's a beautiful day. Okay, so I gotta tell you, for the record, my name is Bethany. It really is. It's, I didn't make it up. It's on my birth certificate. It's Hebrew. It means house of my people. And I loathe when people call me Beth. Now you know. You gotta drive past Halfords, I think. So, yeah. so we're back from the from the dentist. Conrad's tooth is now fixed. Yeah, I got the teeth. But there is, a, but there does seem to be a problem with the van. What's going on there? I don't know. There's a little light here that's on, and I don't remember. Halfords. And I uh, uh, took a little piece of my tooth out. He put a temporary filling in, and uh, I feel a little better already. So there it goes. Yeah, we've eaten. Mark and me have eaten. Anybody smell smoke? There is a problem with the van though. There's a light flashing and we don't know what it Do is. Do you smell smoke? No, I'm kidding. Ah. <laughs> All right. Oh, Mark. So, hopefully the saga of the van does not take a turn for the worst. This is the other extremely efficient it side. Is, yes, and this is my original job. In fact, it's the job I, the real job I enjoy is this, basically. Well, I know. The chief washer up and bottle washer, blah, 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 whatever the thing is. There you go. But um, this is how I started my life as a as a man member in a hotel. I used to clean the hotel. Work with the chambermaid. It's the chair. I wasn't doing a night I played a dance band, which is fun. But um, what the fuck am I doing this for now? I don't know. But this is what you, you this is what you, no this, is, this, is, this is what you enjoy most, right? Eh? This is what you enjoy most, right? It is, it's always in my key. Yeah, it is. <laughs> hey, I just wanna, if it registered, uh, I love fish and chips. This is really good. Fish and chips. 
Mushy peas. Mushy peas. Vinegar. Garlic sauce. Mushy peas. Welcome to Montreal, Canada, the location or the headquarters of the making of the documentary All Day and All Night Long, the Graham Bonnet Band on tour. This documentary is a little different. Usually documentaries have a, a plot that's already pre-written. In this documentary, the story is unfolding as the band is on tour. And what makes this thing really interesting is each band member is equipped with a camera and they film their experiences on the road, send it back to me in Montreal, and I put it together on a daily basis. So it's quite interesting as the story unfolds and we have absolutely no idea what's gonna happen. So on the recent Richie Blackmore story documentary movie, yeah, there was a, um, a segment where Richie insinuates that you deliberately sabotaged the look of the band by escaping yeah. out oh. the, the fire escape window of a hotel to go and get a haircut. Yeah. Is this true? No, that, that never happened. Uh, basically, I had my hair, because of the sort of style it is, or was then, and still is, um, it was all long at the back. I don't like having little straggly bits sticking out, you know. It was untidy, so I decided one afternoon in Edinburgh, I think it was, I can't remember the city, but um, with my then ex-wife, we have said, should we go for a walk in the city? I'll go and get a haircut while we're doing that. There was no like guard on the door. I remember Colin Hart telling me about this later, but I didn't go out the bathroom window. That never happened. I just walked out of the hotel, went for a haircut like anybody does if they're, it's like having a shave, you know? Same thing. Oh, you shaved today, how dare you? You know, but uh, I can't understand why Rich is still talking about it now because it was not meant to be anything, but just a damn haircut. And I would never do anything to uh, sabotage the show or upset him in, a, in, a, in any way. You know? What was the aftermath of the haircut? Um, he said, we've we got a, Richie wants to meet us all in his room. So we all went down to his room at about, I don't know, 11 o'clock in the morning or something. And um, we're all in there like, what the fuck's happened, you know? And we sat down and Coz, I think Cozy was the first one to say, well, you know, because he's like, why are we here? This is like, you know, schoolboys or something. You sit in a little circle. But what's happening? You know, he said, what's, what's up? You know, said, and Rich just goes, it's hair. And the whole room just cracked into a laughter. It just, the guffaws were guffawing everywhere. <laughs> what, what do you mean? He had it cut. Oh, what? You know, and the band just fell fell apart, and we just everyone was laughing, and uh, he took it personally. It was nothing to do with anything but just a basic, you know, tidying up of one's head. <laughs> so just being, that's all it was, and it was not meant to hurt or destroy the show or whatever. And I, as I said, I don't understand why Richie's still talking about it now because it means nothing. To me, it was just another event in a, a very normal day. There we have it. And that was it. The hey, story, the story of the haircut. That was it. Yeah. Getting the band to the bus is an art form unto itself, really. Generally, someone's forgotten something at the last minute and they can't find it. Um, so I, I tend to make bus call about 20 minutes earlier than it really needs to be. Because usually there's about 15 minutes of, uh, of general confusion where no one really seems to know what's going on. Of course, once we get in the bus, it's uh, sometimes he gets a little bit lost. Uh, there was that time we went around the same roundabout about uh, 12 times before we eventually decided upon uh, a direction in which we were going to go that did actually turn out to be the entire opposite direction of where the gig was. So we always do our best to get to the show. It's always with the best of intentions. Well packed van. Merch. Yeah. You gotta watch.
watch out for that ball. So as you can see, the venue has the venue has a very narrow alleyway behind it. You're really tight here. And the van is very wide. So what we are trying to do is get down. Uh, you're you're alright, come right here. You're okay. Keep on going. We're trying to get down the alleyway with the van without getting the van stuck in the alleyway. Right, you're really close to that car, but you got okay. a lot of room on this side, Conrad. I got you. Alright. <coughs> I'm gonna be super tight here because I can see it. Then tight there. Yeah. Okay. Conrad's doing good. very, very well. <laughs> no, of course, we won't be able to get We've made the big time. Yeah, this is the big time. This is the big time. I dreamed of this all my life. This alleyway. <laughs> This is what Graham has worked towards okay. yep. for okay, 40 years, on. this okay. alleyway. Now we should, we the think, one, right? in the next walk or two, the question is, are you going to be able to get it's by somebody it? else's van then. There's a van there, so we're assuming that's their van. Yeah, um, um, just, um, hold on. So we will continue to attempt to get the tour van down right. the alleyway without getting stuck. You got a lot of room on this one. Maybe I can move that one. And here we are at Sheep Street. Sheep Street, we're going to the we are going to Cozy Powell Memorial. And here we are visiting the Cozy Powell Memorial. I'm so sorry to get to meet him. And this is an understatement. Yeah. Are you going to cry? I'm, I'm going to wait for the statue. Are you going to cry? <laughs> oh, <my baby. laughs> Graham at the Cozy Powell Memorial. Mark? We couldn't be here for the unveiling of this, but we're here now. Graham was invited to the unveiling of this, but uh, I couldn't sadly we couldn't make it. He couldn't make it. It's just there. Okay. Aww. My friend. Aww. Forever. But here we are now. And where are we? We're in uh, Sirencester. 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 This is where Cozy lived. This is where he's from and where his uh, adopted mom, Polima. And he was given the name of Colin Powell. He never really knew his real parents and um, he never knew his real name. <laughs> but he was Cozy Powell. There we go. Right well on. My friend.